Alright, I'm going to try and do a another video on a four speed. Hopefully this one's a little bit better than the last one I did. This is just the order I like to do it in. Um, there's more than one way, but this is just how I prefer to do it. Try and do it the same way every time just to make it a little bit smoother and you don't forget anything. But um, I like to put the detent plunger in first. Uh, make sure it's like nice and free. You don't want any grit or anything in there if you've cleaned it out whether you've sandblasted it or whatever you used you want to make sure that it's not going to get hung up and a lot of time those springs are broken or worn out so get a new one if it's not like fairly tight um but then after that i like to put in the cam plate so start it and start it in the hole there and then as you get closer, you kind of want to guide that detent down. Okay. So once you start pushing it down, then push the cam plate back, and then you can kind of let it go on there. I don't know how much that you could see, but just get your finger down, push that down, and then as you get just enough clearance to get into one of the detent holes, that's the position that you want it in for assembling. So you can kind of see both of the wing sections are, both of the wing sections are horizontal. The next step that I like to do is put in your fourth gear. I mean, obviously that's the first step no matter what, but I also like to install the new sprocket when I do that because there's been times when, you know, you might have fitment issues or whatever it is. You want to get that figured out right away because a lot of time when I'm putting in new sprockets and new tab washers or whatever it might be, sometimes there's something that gets in the way. So I like to do the full sprocket installation right now. Tab washers, you have to file the corners because they just stamp these out and they rarely fit nicely. So I usually will take a square file and just clean up all the corners and then it goes on way easier. Okay, so now we've got fourth gear and we've also got the sprocket on and tightened down. So um, the next step is you're gonna put your lay shaft in. I'm going to try and hold this flashlight and work at the same time so you can really see what's going on. But I like to fill that needle bearing with some assembly lube. And then you're cleaned up, ready to go, inspected lay shaft will get installed. Oh, make sure that that lay shaft bushing is properly installed. There's a little... Um, Right here you can see there's a little pin to locate that bushing, so make sure that gets installed properly. Now you can put in your freshly cleaned and ready to go lay shaft. Make sure it spins, everything looks good. Okay, the next step you're gonna install the lay shaft third and second gear, um, and then also the shift forks. Now there's two shift forks for these transmissions. And if you look at them on the end here, you can tell how one has a smaller radius than the other. This one has a smaller radius, obviously. That is your main shaft shift fork. So smaller radius goes with the main shaft, larger radius goes with the lay shaft. So I'm going to take and make sure that your little roller that is installed and make sure you don't lose it. So I'll put either grease or 
assembly lube all over it just to kind of keep it in place because it likes to fall off. So here is second and third and that's how the lay shaft rides on it. Fourth gear on the lay shaft or high gear has dogs and second gear has dog houses you can see there so those are what you want to engage so that's kind of how you know what direction these need to go in when you're reassembling it so you've got your shift fork on you've got your little roller on there so put a bunch of assembly lube on lay shaft you can never have too much and then slide it right on and then your shift fork is gonna land in the cam plate just like that. I'll light you up a little here. So that's kind of what that step looks like. So we're sitting here. Now we're going to install your next two gears. Second and third for the main shaft and the shift fork that goes with them. I'm gonna lubricate everything I can kind of reach here. This shift fork's gonna sit on top like this, kind of opposite of the way the other one was, the lay shaft one was riding. Again, we wanna get some assembly lube on there so we don't lose it. Okay, so that's how that's gonna ride. Now what I do is I'll take like these two fingers and I'll wear it like this. And then rest it in there. And then that shift fork kind of wants to fall anyway. So you just kind of want to guide it and then you just let go. I don't know how much of that you could see. I blocked it really badly, but you hopefully get the idea. And then while everything's just kind of chilling out, you're going to take the shift fork shaft and you're gonna slide that through and then kind of guide both the shift forks and you might have to get in there and wiggle it around. Sometimes you have to push up on the main shaft shift fork, but that one's going in nicely. So now you can kind of see how everything just kind of lines up for that main shaft to ride through there. Everything's where it needs to be. There's really only one way to fit it appropriately, like without fighting it a lot up to this point. So as long as you've got it to this point, everything's, you know, where it should be. Now lube up your main shaft. gonna run it right through kind of twist it around and let it kind of find its way and then add a little lube for the bushing on add a little lube for the bushing for first gear on the lay shaft and now it's all engaged and rolling in neutral there. Or a neutral, I shouldn't say the proper neutral. All right, so I've got my inner cover ready to go. I've got new gasket with a little bit of three bond, the 1211 on there. Um, you still have your cam plate in between the second and third gear. And so now we can install that inner cover and then I'll show you where to have the quadrant when you slide it on.
So once you get about a quarter of an inch away, you know, you have a, a once you have once you have a slight gap like that, then you're ready to position the quadrant so it lands properly for, you know, timing. Everybody was talking about transition timing and that's what they're talking about here. So I'll show you. The center hole of the main shaft and then kind of the center line through where the shift spindle goes here you want to draw an imaginary line between those two and that's where you're going to land this middle notch on the quadrant once that's landed right there in the middle then you can push it the rest of the way home once you've got that then you're going to install your allen your phillips head and your bolt down here and that's how you assemble a four speed gearbox then once it's all assembled, you'll want to kind of run it through and make sure you've got all your gears. Um, it's important to pull the main shaft this way up against this bearing race because that's where it's going to run. If you have it pushed all the way the other direction, um, it'll actually cause things to kind of bind up because you won't have proper alignment of the gear. So uh, make sure you always kind of pull that back again once you're testing but that's pretty much how you do a four-speed gearbox on a Triumph.